The family is all packed up. Family. Bunch of dependents back there. The truck is loaded. And we're probably about, you know, 10 minutes out from the spot Secret. where we will leave our truck and pack up the sleds, pack up the kids, and head out. We're about, oh geez, close to the northern border of Algonquin Park. We're looking at getting in uh, off of where we're parking, you know, at least a couple kilometers. Hopefully the conditions are okay, the snow's not too deep, no slush, and we're basically gonna set up camp post up in one spot for a few days on this lake and just explore the area, see if we can jump back on the hike, take the kids with us. The bed of the truck is completely full and when you're, when you're first of all, when you're winter camping, you have more stuff because you need more clothes and a hot tent and a wood stove and all this kind of stuff. And we also have the kids with us, so we're literally need to pack for another two additional humans, which we also have to physically carry those the humans into the woods as well. So. Uh, but anyways, it looks like a beautiful day out. It's minus 10 degrees, not too windy, sunny, and we're looking really forward to getting into the bush. It's gonna be a heavy load. North's ready, North's got his game face on. North. Good boy. Uh, kids are not particularly cooperating right now, unfortunately. Hey, bud. Hey. Hey, we're going camping, bud. Hey. Oh, it's okay. He'll cheer up when he gets moving, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Busting out the backcountry skis. North. Good boy. Well, this is exhausting. Fortunately, uh, the traveling conditions on the lake are pretty good, but there is a layer of snow that the toboggans are digging into, and uh, it's making it pretty challenging. But uh, beautiful evening. Let's hope we can get the tent and everything set up before dark. Sun will drop below the trees in an hour and a half, so. I, might be kind of tight, but probably be able to, to do it before two and a half hours will be pitch black. So I think we'll get it done, but uh, gotta keep moving. Just drop that down, my bad. Ooh, look at those stakes, yes. Yes, yes. Uh, 
north. <laughs> awesome. Looks like a ton of fish fishing out front too, eh? We are getting close and uh, once again, we have the lake to ourselves. Not many prints, not many snowmobile tracks out here. So we made it to the campsite, but it is a steep and slick climb to get up to it. It's nice when you get there no, though, nice view of the lake. So we're having to uh, take everything up one by one, as you can see here. Go, go. Nice. Sweet. This is pretty good, eh? Yeah. Beauty sight. Nestled into the white pines and oh the ground's super hard packed already, eh? Yeah. Pretty pretty hard packed. And then if we're gonna do bows. Should be alright for bows too, eh? Wow, look at this view, huh? North isn't tired. <laughs> I wish I had the energy to run up and down a hill full. Full rip. All right, should I give this a go? I mean, you can try. Ready, go. Okay? Yeah. Uh, it's like walking on a sheet of ice. Uh, 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 uh. Woo! Oh, that was tiring. Look, see how deep it is, hey, toward the snow? Huh? Like the snow's like like oh, over two feet deep right here, but we're just walking on top. Wow. Tor. Yeah. Please come help quick. I almost did it. I just ran out of gas. Ready? One. Well, here we are at our campsite. Wesley is not in a great mood. Tori's pushing him around, which seems to calm him down. I mean, he's nice and bundled in there. We don't know why he's upset, but it's hard to tell because uh, he doesn't talk due to his uh, disorder. But he usually has fun on these trips, and I'm sure he will. I mean, there's times on trips where I felt like crying too, and I'm a grown man. Hey bud, it's okay Wes. Nice to have a table, right? Sorry. 
Well, it's just I'm panicking because the baby is crying, okay? So the faster we get things done, the, the faster Wesley stops crying. Babies cry, you know? Wherever you are, babies are going to cry. Yeah, and usually you stop and you comfort them and not just let leave them scream crying so you can build a bunch of sh**. So he's just assembling our uh, wood stove here. It's collapsible. Nice. Hey, bud. Hey, Wes. It's okay. Huddy, you're good, eh? You're good, Hud. You're good, Huddy. <laughs> Wow, things are so much relaxed, more relaxing all of a sudden for some reason. Okay, give me a minute here. 
Trying to get the kids organized. Trying to kiss my face.
It is the morning. Uh, not a great sleep last night. Wesley kept waking up crying. I think his nose is stuffed up. Maybe he just came down with a sniffle and then when he can't breathe, he wakes up scared and he starts crying. Huddy was too hot all night and was sweating. On the docket today is bacon and eggs. I'm gonna go get some more wood. Uh, North had a pretty good night, hey bud? Where are you going? Okay. Oh, door. Yeah, we got uh, good snowfall coming down. A little warmer today, um, but uh, yeah, good snowfall and uh, probably about minus four, minus five or something like that today. So uh, um, yeah, do you think I should go just look for some wood quickly and and come back and we'll get breakfast going, hon? Sure. Yeah. How do you feel, honey? I feel cold. Do you want to divorce me? If I survive. <laughs> if I make it out alive. Our country is one to do a port cause, not just water access. So much more fun than yesterday, Cody. Yeah. Jim, your eggs are ready. Okay. I'm gonna put it right on your toast. Okay. Mmm, that looks epic. All right. So hungry.
I'd sin. What are you gonna go do, Tor? I'm gonna attempt to go for a cross country ski on the lake. With Huddy? With Huddy. Hopefully I don't fall. I think you'll be fine. Yeah, he's been anxious to get out, I think. I don't know. Mm -hmm. well, I won't be long because Lord knows I'm not very good at it, so. Are you going to circumvent the lake? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bud. Hey. Tori's going to go explore the lake a bit. Well, I'm out for a ski. I'm not very good at it. It's probably my fourth time cross-country skiing. Um, I feel a little safer being on a lake versus a trail because trails can be hilly and that's when I fall, so sticking to the lake. North has joined me for the walk. Last week I caught a speckled trout and a lake trout. Today I'm going for a splake, which is a hybrid between a speckled trout and a lake trout. I'm gonna aim at about 10 feet deep. And I'm gonna put another minnow out at about 30 feet. cross-country skiing for one day. I did not make it very far. There's Jim. I give credit to cross-country skiers because this is exhausting. Somehow it's hurting my shoulder. I fell. Oh. <laughs> I wasn't using both poles. Okay, thank you, Norris. Okay, let's see if I can get up. Oh. Oh. Norris, you're not helping the situation. You did it. Huddy didn't even wake up. Hmm. Why don't you just go down to uh, where my tracks go? And, uh... Well, got a little system here. I use the slush from my uh, from my hole to freeze this stick in, and uh, I'm gonna tie a line from this stick down and use this as a set line. I mean, we'll see. Um, it would be nice if I had a bell or something for the end of that, which I don't. But uh, at least it should freeze in there thick enough it should freeze in hard enough that I won't lose a fish 
if I get one on and I'll see some movement if I keep a visual eye on it. So it should tell me uh, if I have something on or not because of that. We're about 12 feet deep right now. It's actually a pretty warm day. I feel like it might be hovering around. Well, the hole's freezing back up, but uh, it might be hovering around freezing anyways. Got my minnows. That is uh, about about uh, maybe three feet off bottom, about 12 feet deep. I can feel my minnow swimming around. So yeah, we will see what happens. I'm gonna set up another line. I might go a little deeper. We'll see, but. Uh, I like that. That's already frozen in there pretty good too. So, and even if that comes out, this will be on the other side of the hole here, the tip. So it shouldn't be able to pull it through before I can get to it. Well, I just went for a little ski and I just got back to the tent. The ski put Hudson to sleep. Hopefully he stays asleep for a little bit while I feed Wesley. Got my minnows in uh six inch wide thermos so they don't freeze or spill and then i got my stick here frozen into the ice and i put one at uh, about 10 feet deep. That one's maybe over there 12 to 15. This one I'm going to rig a little differently. I'm going to uh, leave my rod on the ground or leave a fishing rod on the ground and then run the line through a, a little piece of tape on the stick. Warmed up today with this uh, overcast and clouds. Pretty deep here. Brook trout in the winter, or in the winter, speckled trout are usually anywhere from, let's say three to 12 feet deep under the ice. And lake trout are from like 15 to 30 plus. Uh, so I'm, I'm trying to go in the middle. So I got one, I'll see some action there. Just gonna stick my rod there in the ice uh, with the bail arm open and that way if I get something it's not gonna pull my rod in even if it breaks through this. Here we go baby. Got one! Oh, nice. Yeah! <laughs> Woo! Splake! Nice. Yeah! Yeah, baby! 
just like I said. Came, saw, conquered. And Tori is upstairs dealing with multiple screaming children. So, right there is a beautiful eating size splake. Uh, brook trout or speckled trout have square tails. Lake trout have deep V's and this is somewhere in the middle. But uh, look at the colors on that beauty. Isn't that awesome? What a great fish, awesome. Didn't take long again. And uh, definitely the stick method worked. I saw that stick moving like crazy. I was just about to uh, drill another hole and all of a sudden, boom, boom, boom. So that's one on the ice. Exciting stuff. Look at the colors, orange fins. Just a total combo between a speckled trout and a lake trout. That's why they called a splake. Tori, you got one. You got one. Oh, maybe not. Hold on, come. I don't know, you had bites anyways. Go, go pull, check your line. Check your line, just give your line a lift. Sorry. No, it's fine. I mean, your rod was like, dee, dee, dee. Huddy had fallen asleep, and I saw him down, and he stayed asleep. Give your line a pull, see if there's anything on it. Nothing? Nothing. I'm sorry, honey. It's okay. You got bites anyways, or your minnow's going bonkers. But you see how this is set up? It's just a little... Should oh, I... look. Good hard pull. No? No. Okay, well, uh, pretty good day uh, so far. I came out here, uh, set up a couple lines, boom, nailed a splake. So I'm super stoked that I've caught a speckled trout, a lake trout, and a hybrid between a speckled trout and a lake trout on our family adventures over the last couple of weeks. So looking forward to having a, a good meal, some delicious fresh fish. Uh, Tori got out for a cross country ski, explored a bit more of the lake. And um, I, ch uh, I cut a bunch of wood this morning, I actually found some nice dry stuff. No hardwood, I searched high and low for hardwood. That's too bad, because it'd be really nice to find a nice standing dead hardwood, but it's not minus 30 out here. So um, with the current temperature, we're able to uh, keep the tent pretty freaking ripping hot. And look, Wesley's coming out. Hey bud. How's that working out for him? The poor little Wesley has been inside all day. He had a really good sleep today, though. Hudson is sleeping. Hey, bud. Happy. You outside? I just have hey, him in. Cutie. I just have him in the front carrier. It's just easier than bundling them all up, so I can just yeah. put him in my jacket. North is clearly Look, he fits in here. Aww. Aww. Mm. Yeah, you've been bundled inside. You've been stuck inside the tent all day. Well, he had a very good sleep. You did. He had to catch up on some sleep.
he's like, I'm good. All the oil fell to one side, uh, which is why the skin didn't stick. We're going to have to bring Wes's own chair soon, right? Eh? Yeah, he's a big boy. Yeah, but I think I like where you hang from better because it, it uh, it's not right in the way. I know, bud. Wesley's food doing over there. Absolutely. Delicious. Mmm. Well, the um, wood stove doesn't exactly cook things quickly, and steak's supposed to cook fast, and, but whatever, man, this is delicious. Nice cut of meat, too. So, what did we have, Tori? Splake and steak. Splake and steak. Cool. Mm-hmm. Kind of like surf and turf, but more specific. What do you think, bud? <clears throat> did you enjoy your pâté chinois? Well, I'm going to finish up this. How was your steak, Tor? It was delicious. Mm -hmm. I'm going to finish up this steak and turn in. We have a lot of really nice dry wood laid in for the night. I'm going to be feeding the fire. Um, Tori was doing it last night well. Mm -hmm feeding Hudson, which was maybe a little too much. Um, yeah, we got things more dialed in tonight. Way warmer in the tent because of the wood we got going. And uh, tomorrow, we're thinking of doing a family snowshoe into the bush behind us to see um, if we can find a trail. We think there might be a snowmobile or a, trapples, a trapper's trail back there that might get us into another lake that we want to just check out, if anything, just to say we've been there. A little reconnaissance, learn um, the bush around here a little better. 
So it should be a little fun and then um, hopefully be back in time to do a little fishing tomorrow and then tomorrow night's going to be our last night here and I am beat. I'm ready to go to bed. What about you Wes? I think Wesley's ready for bed too. <laughs>